Right, guys, do me a favour. Just type me a yes into into the chat box if uh, if you're all ready to go, and we'll get kicked off if everybody's just got got in there and got settled down. Anyone coming in late will just pick it up. So we'll, we're we're all just about here, so that couldn't be better. Right, guys, brilliant. So here we are. Um, basically, what we're going to do today, and I'll just give you a, a brief outline, is that um, we're going to go through making, a, a creating, looking at our profiles, uh, just to make sure that we've got everything in place. Because it's surprising how many people create a profile and then leave it. The don't look at it again. They don't do anything with it, and and it's one of the the biggest things that that actually gets people to follow you, to join you, um, everything that, that you want them to do, that you want your community, your tribe to do, this will happen within your profile. So what I am going to do, for, and I can see by a, a, quite a few of the names that are on the uh, on the webinar today, I'll just give you a bit of background into to who I am, what I do, pretty much why I'm qualified for all of this, and, and basically I started in the web with the web in 1996 and that was a designer developer uh, creating and building websites before that I had been a professional artist a watercolor artist with my own um, I had my own gallery and I just sort of got into the web by mistake but one of the things that I learned really quite quickly was that um, probably around about 99 2000 was just how everything was starting to take off you could see it was really starting to bubble up and so one of the things that I did um, almost immediately was created a blog and that blog's been running in lots and lots of different forms for probably probably best part of 10 years now so that's one of the things that a profile will do a profile will actually uh, take people back to your to your website to your to your uh, to your blog to wherever you want to be one of the things that I talked about on the last webinar was especially your website. Well, one of the things about creating a website is that it doesn't matter which platform you use, how good your profile is, whatever. Basically what you want to be doing is you want to be taking people back uh, to your website and then pretty much from there you can sell them whatever you want. Probably round about, I think it was round about 2000, 2001, I joined a publishing company uh, as their web designer and as well it was termed as lead web designer but there was only me at the time um, and I stayed with them with CN for the oh, best part of five years and in that time I went from being a designer right up to being um, the director of digital media and I looked after everything from newspapers radio stations the budget all sorts of different things I had a staff of about I think it was about 10 when I left and in that time we we pretty much pioneered an awful lot of things would you believe we had video on the web we had all sorts of lots and lots of different things one of the big things that i could see was the communities were starting to grow and then in 2006 2007 i went down to uh, to manchester and joined um, a digital marketing group and we did email uh, design and broadcast and that was one of the best jobs that i've had I have to say it taught me such a lot and we were dealing with people such as Debenhams, Nectar, uh, Office Depot, the shopping channel and basically what we were doing is we were building everything up, uh, all the, the digital online uh, offering and packaging it for them and sending it out which was just fantastic and I, I was with those guys for probably about 18 months which was one of the biggest learning curves of my life then I left and and joined and started sorry my own business and from there probably around about 2006 2007 that was when I started to really get into the web uh, and into the into social media and because basically what you could what I could see was that um, everything that was starting to bubble up with social media was going to give you a platform to give you a voice and that's one of the big things uh, is creating your own voice and but we'll talk about that a little bit later on can everyone hear me okay is, is everybody still with me just type a yes into the box and that'll be brilliant guys I can see that there's a few just 
join me. Claire's just joined. Uh, Ray and Amanda have been in from the start. Sarah's here again, which is just fantastic. It's it's fantastic to see everybody. Just type me a yes, guys, if you can hear me okay, and and if you're ready to crack on. Ah, brilliant. Excellent, guys. So what we'll do is we'll, uh, without further ado, we'll just set off. So one of the, th well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take you through what we're going to be touching on today. And one of the things that I like to to do about my webinars, even though you guys are, are sort of listening to me, if you've got a question, if there's anything that you want, just type it into the box. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll I'll get to it as as I can. I usually do a Q and A session right at the very end. But if there's something that you're not too sure of, or something that you want to ask me on any particular section that we go through, just fire it into the box and I'll answer it. Right, guys. So what we'll do is, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take you through uh, what we're going to be t talking about today, which is how to make your mark what to add and what to leave out in a profile because this can be one of the big things really and, and some things these are some of the things that people get wrong really quite uh, quite often which platform should you concentrate on now i tend to concentrate on what's termed as the big four which is um facebook twitter linkedin big five sorry um twitter facebook linkedin google plus and uh, pinterest pinterest is a fantastic uh an absolutely fantastic platform and if you ever get a chance to use it or what I'll do is at the end of this I'll send you a link probably in an email uh, just to, to let you know uh, where the the uh, sorry guys my f I'll just knock my phone off because it keeps bleeping and he's me telling you guys <laughs> to knock everything off <laughs> it sounds a bit thing doesn't it uh, but but I have a, a webinar on, on uh, Pinterest and for you guys and I know there's quite a few of you that are here today that weren't here on that one I'll send you a link in, in an email and you can have a look at it but if you don't use Pinterest the webinar is actually worth having a look at what makes a good and a bad profile and, and this is something I, I think that people do a, a bit like what to leave in and what to leave out um, this is sometimes where people can really go wrong so we'll have a look at that do you have a business profile or a personal one well s some you don't have any choice you've got it like Facebook you've got to have a personal profile before they'll allow you to have a business one and then there's LinkedIn and things like that how often do you change your profile that's something else because I, I come across lots of people that have changed jobs um, they've changed even if it is jobs it can be the, the departments changed or whatever and they don't update any of the profiles and that's a big no-no the other thing is is communicating in a way that everyone wants to join in and be a part of what you do so that's one thing that we will sort of we will pick up pick up on and highlight uh, really quite not in depth but because we're, we're obviously going to have a high level view of all of this what we'll do is I'll take you through my profiles and on uh, this one we'll start off on Facebook is everyone still with me guys just type a, a yes into the into the box if you're still with me and everything's okay fantastic fantastic right one of the things about Facebook is and what I will do I'll use my, my point to just to sort of highlight what it is this is my business one this this is my Keith McLean social media uh, social marketing Academy and this is the one that I use to to push people to specifically for the business now one of the things that has changed well not it, quite recently in in Facebook is the uh, opportunity to put in a big cover image so one of the things that I would say to people is is use this for whatever it is that you want to use it for and I know that might sound a bit a bit daft but basically what I mean is if you've got competitions coming up if you've got promotions or, or services coming up new ones use this I tend to do it if I'm going to be like when I was running this webinar last week basically what I did was I changed my I, I changed this round and, and actually put a uh, an image in there that said 
uh, webinar um, on the 6th of December, 2 o'clock, this is what we're going to be covering, blah, blah, blah. And I left it up there for about three or four days. You, now, you do have to be careful because one of the things that Facebook says is that you shouldn't be using this for promotion, but to me, that's basically what it's all about. If you're on Facebook or any of the other uh, social marketing platforms, then that's definitely what it's about. Basically, what you want to do is you want to promote you and your business. So use this, and we'll go through it in a, in a little bit more, uh, little bit more depth when I get in there. The about us section. This is something that, again, and I'll just I'll click this up. I've got these linked to my uh, to my Facebook pages, and then I can take you through it live rather than just have a series of slides. Just let me know if everybody can. Yep, that's right, Ray. It has got to be so. That's that's dead right. That's that's a good point. Um, just let me know, guys. Can everybody see the screen? Okay. Can you now see that that we're actually on Facebook? Just type me a yes in there, that would be brilliant. Fantastic. Brilliant, guys. That, that couldn't be better. Right, so, like I've said before, use this. And, and remember, you can change your cover pretty much any time you want. One of the things that when you do change your cover as well, especially on your profile is let it run in, into your wall, let it run into your comments box because that will automatically update that um, the people that are following you that you've changed it. So if you've got a message on there, it's a fantastic way of letting people know that there's something coming up without continually like bothering them or sending them out emails or constant updates. It's a really good way. One of the things that I do pretty much right away is that in this little section here, the first thing that I put is the web address because obviously that's where you want people to go in the end up yes you do want them to read everything that's in there but you do want them to go through to your website because that's basically where you're going to sell them your products and your services so if you just click into this and you can see there now one of the things with the description and, and what I tend to do is I try and make this as keyword rich as I possibly can. And the reason I do that is, is because Google does pick a lot of this up. We'll get onto Google Plus in a moment and, and I'll take you through the profile on Google Plus. But even in Facebook, because Facebook's been gone a few years longer, Google really does pick this up. So it, it's worthwhile having a really good think about, you, about what you put into your description. Make sure you, that you've got all your contact details in there. That's one of the big things for me. The amount of times I look at the About Us section on, on people's um, pages, and this doesn't it doesn't really matter which one it is, which platform it is, where things are missing, you know, like website and, and uh, products and stuff like that. Make sure that everything's filled in. Does that make sense, guys? Just type a yes into the box if it does, if you're still with me. Excellent. Brilliant. One of the things that I, I really like about Facebook uh, is basically the way that it's laid out because it's nice and clean and Google Plus have gone along a similar line. One of the things that I, I think has, has happened to LinkedIn and we'll, and we'll get on to LinkedIn in a moment is that it, it has going to be dark. It's going to a wee bit cluttered for me. But I just like the really simple layout of uh, of the way that Facebook is. Right. This is the business page. Now, one of the things, like I said before, pretty much what you've got to do, you've got to have uh, a personal page. And this is my personal page. Now, I tend to have this like screwed down really quite tight. The, the thing about this one is, is that this is really just for me and my friends close family, close friends, uh, just the guys I play in the bands with, uh, some of the guys I used to play football with. This is really just a personal one. So a lot of the times, even though some things do tend to sneak in every now and again, I tend to keep this just for personal. And I think it's nice to have that distinction between a business, a business profile and a personal profile because it starts to, it starts to overlap and you, and I put things into this one which aren't really that businessy. 
and they don't really sell that well now i know on facebook and all the other platforms you'll see people with their own names like tony robbins and people like that uh richard branson and that's fine if you've reached that level that's that couldn't be better but if you haven't and you have got a business then push the business first that would be my recommendation guys any questions on Facebook guys just before we move on just let me know if there's uh, if there's anything you want to know any questions you want to ask Yep, everyone happy? Brilliant. Excellent. Right, so what we'll do is we'll just move on. Now this is what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through my LinkedIn program uh, profile, sorry. And one of the things that I really like about LinkedIn, even though it, to me it is starting a bit, starting to look a wee bit cluttered, this is one of the main things for me. Your, that your profile is completed 100% because if it isn't and you've got gaps in it then you're missing a, a, a really big trick when people come to uh, to visit your profile so what we'll do is I'll just click on it and we'll go back through to uh, to my LinkedIn profile so again now one of the big things for me especially with profiles is that from Facebook to LinkedIn I am targeting a totally different audience. Uh, the audience on on Facebook is, for me, a lot a total total difference. Um, the one on Facebook, even though I do sort of um, connect with business people, that's really in a it's 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 really at a sort of high level high level view. It isn't really in a I don't really get a lot from Facebook probably why I've skimped over it a wee bit because I want to concentrate quite a lot on LinkedIn just do me a favor guys just type into the box how many of you are on are actually on LinkedIn that have got a LinkedIn profile Brill. nice to see that quite a few of you have actually got a, a LinkedIn profile Excellent. So hopefully by the time we've got through this, you sh you should uh, light read yes and the beginnings of a business page. Brilliant. Yeah, that couldn't be better. Uh, what we'll do is in, in one of the the the, uh, the future webinars, I'm going to go through business pages for uh, for for LinkedIn because it's something that people don't get either. The the tented. I don't. I'm probably saying that making a mess of it is a bit strong, but some people just don't get it at all so it, it is nice to see that you that you have got uh, that pretty much most of you if not all of you have got uh, LinkedIn profiles so one of the big things about LinkedIn is making sure that it's a hundred percent now again think about these as keywords the this is exactly how people find you this is it, it's got to be keyword rich so for me and <laughs> One of the big things for me is this, the profile picture, and and I'll show you in a minute why that's so important. But the amount of times I see people that have just got and businesses that have just got an avatar in there, you are certainly missing a trick, guys. If you don't have a a profile image in there, if you don't have a, a an image of you, or at the very least your logo. But what I would say is that you you've definitely got to have something in there that people can recognise as you. So. So what I would say is, into this, where where I've got social marketing consultant and speaker, that's pretty much what I do. That that's my day job, if you like. Um, so make sure that when you put a a description into there, it's it's really um, basically what it does is it replicates what you do really really well it's got to be nice and tight this because basically what you don't want to do you don't want to be giving out mixed messages and that's another thing that I see quite a lot of is uh, mixed messages 
So even though he's got White Haven coming to the United Kingdom, he's got Carlisle in brackets. I'm not in Carlisle. I'm 42 miles away from Carlisle. Obviously, the the problems of of running on a uh, on an American platform. Now, current, put down what you've done, and then people can see. And where it says see all director of digital media marketing and immigration innovation group, then people have got a quick snapshot of what you've done and where you've been. Now, the big thing for me is is the summary. And I put into this, I did a talk, or probably the beginning of the year, and this was one of the things that uh, one of the organisers said. That one of the organisers said about me. Um, so I put that in there because that's basically a testimonial, and then the rest of it, as you can see there, is me talking to the person, and this is really important, guys. So if you've got a a, a pad and a pen, write this down because. Basically, what to use this bit for? Use it as an aspirational uh, tool, not as a historical tool. So what I tend to do with this is, is I use this as uh, basically what I'm doing now and what I want to do in the future. So it's very aspirational for me. So I always try to put in this, um, as I say, what I'm doing now, what I want to do in the future, and who I want to do it with. So. How I get that across is that that's probably this bit there. This bit here is probably the most important section, the most important paragraph, because it says I cover all topics from a sky high level all the way down to nuts and bolts, so everyone gets it, and you don't leave feel you don't leave feeling confused or not really sure what what you've just encountered. Two things in there, guys, that's really important for me is first of all the term from a sky high level that means that I can see it from you know looking at it from a strategic view because I've done that in the jobs that I've done being directors of companies and, and whatever the other thing is the nuts and bolts because that means for like today where you've got people who are really just starting out in this real beginners that I also can sympathize and empathize with them and get the point across so just in that one paragraph that lets people know that I can do it from a high level, like a corporate level, right down to a one-man band or, or someone with just a couple of uh, staff that I can go in and, and do uh, and do the training and the consultancy on that. Does that make sense? Just type a yes in there, guys, if it makes sense to you or if you want to ask me a question on this bit because it's really important, the summary side of it. Yeah, that's that's right, that's right, Red. You, actually, you and uh, you and Sarah and and uh, and Jane have picked up on the same thing. It it is a subtle shift, and and basically for me, the 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 easy for me to say, the subtle shift for me is most people tend to keep this as as like a CV, and it's the jobs that they've done, not what they want to do, and that doesn't matter if you if you're self-employed. Or if you are actually out there looking f for a job. So if I was there looking for a job now, this would all change. All of this would change quite dramatically. Because basically what I would be saying in there is, is exactly what I want to do. And not just now, but it, more so in the future. Because you're trying to attract um, a, a potential employee. So basically what you'd use the summary for is to hook an employee. And there's lots and lots of ways around that. So... It's a fantastic tool, is the summary, so make sure that you use it. I also try and get in there as well my uh, links to my website. Even though they aren't active links, they are at the bottom, so it's uh, it's worth putting them in there. You also get a little uh, a little section there, specialities. Another one, keyword rich. Use it as keyword rich, attracting your tribe, building social marketing communities, social media consulting, problem solving, answering questions. Everything that I do is in there. And every now and again, if I'm doing something that I haven't done before, I'll come in and I'll put it in here. And if there's something that I've stopped doing, like I was saying before about uh, people not updating the profiles, if there's something that I'm not doing that I've stopped doing, like say if I stopped doing biz business strategy, I'll come back in and take it out. Because basically what I don't want to do is, I don't want to be seen for doing something that I'm not 
if that makes sense if it doesn't sound back to front i don't want google picking up things and me coming back in searches for business strategy if i don't do it um i, I would rather just be in there for the things that i do do so experience be quite uh expansive on this because again what you're trying to do is you're trying to hook either a, a potential employee uh, and well you could be actually because people do look at this to, to get employees but that's another story but if you're looking for work be it you know self-employed or, or be it uh, that you're looking for employment again just outline everything that you've done in every company don't skimp on it if you can guys I tend to just do a couple of paragraphs but the main thing for me like when I was uh, director of digital media at, at uh, MIG these are the big things for me Nectar, Office Depot, Debenhams, JD Williams I should really have Next and people like that in there same again everything that you've done just highlight in there because people do look at this and, and it's, an, it's a known fact that they do so make sure that your uh, your profile is as full as it can be especially on LinkedIn probably more so than any other that's why I'm, I'm tending to be spending a wee bit of time on this again skills and expertise put it in there what you do and make sure that you know you've got everything in there these are the groups that I'm affiliated to that I follow so again people can see the types of groups that I'm in um, what it is that I do social media consultant social media social media so people get a flavor from the groups that I'm in um, basically what I do and it's going to be the same for you because if you own I don't know say you own a, a photography business and there's lots of them on on uh, on LinkedIn then down here down the you know the groups that you would have joined would have been photography groups or how-to groups so make sure that you've joined quite a few I mean some people I, I probably have too many in, in fairness I, I probably uh, should go through these and just nip some of them out because it, I don't really contribute to all of them and again all your contact details now what I'll do is because I'm not signed in I'll just quickly sign in and then we can see all of my uh, all of my profile is everybody with me guys any questions everybody happy at the moment Yep, yeah, everybody ticking along. Brill. Excellent, guys. Excellent. Right, now one of the... Just before I move back onto my profile, one of the things uh, that I, I did quite a while ago was I put my blog into this so that when people come on, when they're actually uh, logged in, before the the screen before obviously you only see my profile because we weren't logged in once you log in and then you look then you can see everything that's uh, that's available to the person who's viewing whatever it is that you do so if people are viewing my profile then they'll see my wordpress blog down there the other good thing about this as well is it also gives me a chance to uh, write a blog story or a blog post about the webinar that I'm holding because then not only is it good advertising because when people come in and see what we're doing they can also see that I've wrote a blog post about it obviously when they click on it it'll take them through to the website another good reason to put your blog in there if you don't have a blog then you should without a doubt and, and pretty much all I did I, I just put a few highlights in about what it is that we were going to be doing on the uh, on the webinar today so another useful trick guys just if you if you do have a blog and it's a WordPress blog then you can just run it in it's a little app something again that probably in the future I'll uh, I'll run a webinar on is how to integrate all this into your profile so that people can see it the other good thing as well and and this I use the free version of uh, of LinkedIn and one of the reasons that I use the free version is well one reason is I'd, I can't see the point in paying $250 uh, 
um, just to view jobs when I'm not interested in jobs because that's basically what you're paying for but the other thing is is you can see who's viewed your profile and this is really quite uh, I don't know I, I, I tend to look at this every every other couple of days maybe see who's looked uh, see who's been a bit nosy which is really quite good I mean these guys I'm connected to anyway so there's nothing there isn't really anybody here who I wouldn't expect to be like Chris and, uh, and Ian but it's you can see by the people who who are looking at your profile if your profile needs to be changed because the good thing about my profile is and I know that I've, I've pretty much got it right and obviously this is why I'm doing this today to show you guys excuse me is because at least two of the people three of the people that have looked at my profile are in the same sort of game as me so social media manager executive search consultant um, Alan social business uh, social media business consultant they're looking at my profile to see what I'm doing see who I'm connecting with so that lets me know that I'm doing everything right Riz just asked the question uh, am I using the paid version like I said I'm, I'm not guys uh, because at, at the moment I just don't think it's worth it I think there's there's better well not better platforms out there but I, I tend to sort of split my time between them I think if I was just totally focused on LinkedIn then I probably would have the paid version I, I think it would be worth it but because obviously the nature of what I do I tend to, to split my time between the big five like I've said so no so if I view my profile again you should probably be able to see another good thing reading list always put your reading list in there guys it's really really quite easy to do so it's uh, and people can see that the type of things that you like to read it's really really uh, quite intuitive this it's surprising how much you can find out by what people read and again everything down the side people who LinkedIn always give you a Uh, in fairness, Ray, Ray just asked a question: uh, Do I work each platform uh, native or from something like Hootsuite? Uh, I, I tend to do a bit of both. In, in actual fact, I'd, it, if I've got time, if I'm actually uh, doing any research on it, then the updates that I put in uh, tend to be the updates on on each platform, rather than use something like Hootsuite or TweetDeck. If I'm doing it off off my phone if I'm away somewhere or if I'm on the train or whatever and I'm doing it like remotely if you, if you will then basically what I tend to do I, I tend to send the same one out to the same platforms but I always structure it so that it fits each platform and the reason I say that is is because on LinkedIn for me LinkedIn is, is like a grown-up Facebook most of the people that I speak to on on LinkedIn are like fairly high level professionals they are, they are the, that are either at the top of the tree in, in their business or the, or the owner business and it's a bit slightly different to Facebook it, it, Facebook tends to be a lot more uh, small business micro businesses you don't even though there's brands on there like Virgin and, and uh, Pepsi and every, everything else they don't tend to engage that much like they do on, uh, on LinkedIn LinkedIn tends to be the place where you can find the people who are at the top. Also, if I had to, to make one recommendation for LinkedIn above all the other platforms, is that as a content management system, or a, not a content management system, a CRM, if it was, if you were looking for somebody uh, in, a, in a business that you wanted to get close to, this is the place to do it. Because into the search box, you could pretty much type You could pretty much type anybody and they will be there and the good thing I mean I've done all this before in, in different webinars but you can see if you type in Richard Branson it's interesting to see that well basically what it does is it, it comes up with your connections first and then if, if they aren't in your network it'll say Richard Branson out of your network 
but for finding things, for finding people and businesses, this is probably the best platform bar none, even better than Google+. Plus. Um, so even if you use it for that, guys, it, it, it's well worth it. One of the reasons, again, why your profile should be at 100%, because if people are looking for you, hence why this is your uh, photo is really important. Because the thing is that I'm, I suppose I'm quite lucky because uh, MacMean is a fairly unique second name. It's uh, it's a, a Southern Irish surname, and the, and it tends to be that most of the MacMeans that are in as, as more so in Great Britain are all related. So one of the things that I, that I sort of picked up on really really qu quite quickly was that if I didn't have a, a picture of myself, then it was really easy for people to come along and say, well, is that the right Keith McBain? Is that the one I'm looking for? If I just had a logo in there, you, you generally just wouldn't know. And I suppose this highlights it really quite quickly. If you go back to the to the home page, and you can see how this has changed. John's there, John Berry, Steve Sumner. You can see basically right away that that's obviously Catherine, Jeremy, the people that I follow, Maggie, you can see, I can see right away if that's the person I want to engage with. Whereas if you've got, Ray's asked a question, what are the key rules if you try to contact someone out of your network? Well, one of the things about it, most people are really quite suspicious about this and it's actually a good question, Ray, but people get really suspicious about this. I've got a couple of people, a couple of friends who were uh, who were on LinkedIn and people continually I wouldn't say they bombard them but they continually uh, ask them to to connect basically because what they want is their list they want their contact list because it, it's uh, it's really valuable to them so what I would say um, for this it isn't even so much the rules if I think it's more like etiquette than it is rules in fairness rare and what I would say is that if, say for argument's sake, uh, Mark had someone in his uh, in his list that I wanted to get close to, what I would do is I would contact Mark and I would say, could you give me an introduction to Joe? Uh, be, and what I would do is, basically I would say why I wanted to, to get in touch with Joe. So if it was for business purposes, which it, I mean 99% of the time it is, it would just be, uh, you know, I, I run a service and uh, I think it would really benefit Joe or he runs the service and I think it would really benefit me. I think if you give a reason then most people will give you a recommendation. If you don't know that person then it's very very rare that you ever get a, a recommendation. I mean I, I get them all the time. People inbox me on, on LinkedIn pretty much maybe five, six, seven, ten times a day and say can you give me an introduction to such and such. If I don't know them then I just say no. And, and I'm, I try not to be blunt, but I have to say that I wouldn't recommend anybody who I didn't know, and, and I think that's the etiquette side of it. So to to answer your question, Ray, I, th I think if if it was someone I knew and I felt confident uh, and comfortable asking them to recommend me or to introduce me to one of their uh, to one of their contacts, then I just think it's the right way of, of going about it. Does that make sense? Brill, Brill, excellent guys, excellent. So is there anything else about LinkedIn and profiles that you want to ask me? Is there anything that, that I that I haven't covered? Just type it into the box guys if you want to ask me a question about LinkedIn. There is a Q&A at the end. But if there's if there's anything that's sort of like springing to mind at the moment, then just just fire it on. One of the other things that I should mention as well is that um, I'm recording the whole webinar. So once we're finished, if there is, you, you can go back and look at it as you know as often as you like. Um, but if there is anything you want to ask me, there'll be comment boxes on it. So even even if there's something that you forgot, that that's fine. Just before we move off it, 
off LinkedIn. This is something that's that really sort of I, I think is a fantastic thing because it gives people um, a really good snapshot of what you do and who recommends you, which is the endorsing side of it now. And I just set up the uh, these little titles, these little headlines. And I don't even ask anybody to endorse me. They just come along and do it. Whereas before, when you would ask them for recommendations, uh, you had to ask, you had to physically get in touch with them and ask them. Whereas endorsements tend people just endorse you um, because they think you you know you're good at what you've done. So th keep an eye on this. It's really, really quite. Uh, it's quite good for for letting people know not only what you've done but what you want to do in the future as well so you know you can just click and I'll show you quite quickly you can just add a skill so if I wanted to add a skill like photography I would just put it in there so it's it's really as simple as that so as your skills grow again as your skills grow or as you as you know you stop doing something remember to do it in this because it it all builds up a picture of of who you are and what your business is does that make sense, guys? Brill. Brill. Right, so Twitter. This is... A, some people ask me, they, they always say, which is your favourite platform, Keith? And I, I just love Twitter. I've been using Twitter since it was Twitter, TWR, uh, probably around about back end of 2006, 2000, beginning of 2007, before it, it sort of like metamorphosed into Twitter. But I, I love it because you can't ramble on. Everything's nice and short and concise. It's just really, really good. And I always think of this as like um, the web's version of a text message. This is really like headlines. When I was at the newspaper group, um, what I always advocated for them was use this as a headline so it could be you know the headline could be uh, dog bites man man bites dog back and then there's a link and you can see there there's there's always always try and get a link back to whatever it is that you're trying to sell uh, be it you know your services your products whatever or even if it's just information that you're giving away always try and get a link in there back to to your website or your blog because if the head if twitter is the headline then places like your blog, your website, uh, Facebook, Google+, Plus. that's where the story is. That's where you can expand on it. So I'll just bring up my profile on uh, on Twitter. How many of you guys have got a Twitter uh, account or a Twitter profile? Just put it into the box. If you have one. I'll just sign in. Because I think I signed out before. Ah, Brill. Excellent. That's actually a good question. Though. What sort of balance do you tend to keep between promotion of you and feeding useful stuff to your audience? Well, I tend to, to do it on a ratio of 80-20. The, the useful stuff that I do, or what, what I tend to put out uh, to the people who are following me, then I, it is an 80-20 ratio. That, and it's 80% what I would term, or, or what you have termed, um, useful stuff rare, to 20% uh, promotion side of it. So the the 20% would be like, pushing out that I'm doing the webinar today or what I'm going to be doing in the future the 80% in between is like um, really good articles on the blog um, good articles by other people and, and I do tend to one of the one of the big things that I, that I do and, and I don't get slated for it but people can't understand why I promote other social media guys uh, and I do it, it, it isn't something that really bothers me I, I, I tend to think that if if you're doing something well, then people are always going to want to hear you know what it is you're doing or the information that you're going to give, um, the expertise that you have, and the, I think they'll always follow you. I mean, my I have about two thousand followers on 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 Twitter, and 
I sort of have had it levelled against me or to me that that isn't many for uh, for somebody who's in my game. Well, one of the things that I continually see is that it's quality, not quantity. So, like such as the webinar today, if I send a tweet out and say, uh, I'm running a webinar next week on, um, I don't know, LinkedIn, for argument's sake, and it's going to be this, 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 and this with a link to either the registration page or to uh, more information on my blog, then I know that of those 2,000 people, there's going to be anywhere between eight and 900 of them that will retweet it, or that will actually turn up. I mean, lots of people who follow me on Twitter are, are actually on the on the webinar today. So, I mean, it, it's it's to me, that proves that it works. So I would much rather have quality than quantity. The other thing about it is as well, and basically what you've got to think of, is if you had, I don't know, 50,000, 100,000 followers, and they were asking you questions every day, or even just a percentage of them were asking you questions every day, you wouldn't get anything done. Does that make sense? Do, do, do you agree with that, guys? Brill, I mean, it's it's just... It is. It's just one of the things that I sort of latched onto really quite quickly. I was quite happy, you know, with a couple of hundred people on Twitter and and a couple of hundred people on Facebook and everything else. It, I never look at the numbers. I always look at the at the reach that that I've got. Because the other thing as well is, and what you've got to remember, is that yes, you might only have I don't know fifty followers, but one of those fifty followers might have two million people. They might have 2 million followers or they might have 150,000 followers, whatever. So if you put out something that's really good and they send it on to their followers, then basically, you, you know, you're hitting the jackpot. And that's really what it's all about, is it's the quality of the people who are following you. And that's really what I try to attract. So, Twitter. Again, remember that this is keyword rich as well, guys, because Google and Bing and every everyone else does pick this up. So it's uh, it is something that's worth spending a wee bit of time on, like it is on LinkedIn, especially if it's one of the the platforms that you use quite a lot. It's always worth um, revisiting. So these are really this this page is obviously really quite standard. It's pretty much. The profile side of it exactly the same as uh, as LinkedIn and Facebook. I always have a picture of myself there, good, bad, indifferent, ugly, doesn't matter to me. I, what I want. I'll give you a, a, an example, and this is just a quick little story. Um, I got asked through Twitter, strangely enough, if I would give a talk to uh, some life coaches over in Shap, which is a really strange place for life coaches to gather. But there you go. Uh, and so I said yes we agreed everything and, and, and I said yes and on the day of the, the talk I set off and, and the first thing I thought was I've never met these people before I wonder if they'll you know if they'll know who I am not even given a thought to the to my profile picture turned up at the uh, at the venue and the nice thing about this is and having an image of yourself everywhere is that when I walked in there was none of that awkward sort of moment when it's like, oh, if you, you know, if you come to serve the dinner, if you <laughs> come to sweep the floors, right away it was, oh, how are you doing, Keith? Nice that you could come, uh, you know, and be here with us today. We're really looking forward to your talk, blah, blah, blah. So that, from that moment on, which again was about 2006, 2007, really sort of reinforced to me exactly just how key and how necessary a photo is so even if it means that you get someone to take it for you, I mean, th that one there was taken by Linda, Linda Meller, who's a, a professional photographer, and, and Linda and I met up for lunch one day in Penrith, and she's, and it was a really sunny day, and she just said, I'll take some pictures of you, Keith. Brilliant. So I always credit Linda with that, and and I always do, wherever I go or, or whatever. So if you haven't got any decent photographs of yourself on any of these platforms, even if you've got a friend or or befriend a photographer on Twitter or whatever, just get it done. Even if you have to pay for it, it it's definitely worth it, guys, without a doubt. 
Now, everything on this is really quite standard. You know, your website, everything else. And there's your bio. And, and like everything else, it tells you how many characters you've got left. And remember, spaces and everything else are characters. So, again, I try and get as many keywords in there as I can. Expert, social media, social marketing, consultancy. Try and get it in there, what you do, because, again, Google does pick this up. And it can also be picked up in the search as well if you do a search for anything in Twitter, which is, is well worth doing. The reason for me where it says Facebook as a problem is because I have about three or four different Twitter accounts and I log in with different ones. So it's neither there nor there for me. But remember on this bit, make sure it's as comprehensive as you possibly can. Same with the design side of it. You can see on my background, I, I created this in Twitter, Twitter. I created this in Photoshop, but there is software on the web that you can go and create these yourself and you can add your images to and you know you can put your website address in like I've done here um, and it's well well worth doing it guys and then just customize it to you know what your own site looks like because what you want as well as far as you possibly can and I think Twitter is probably the best one of this because I think it's the only one where you can actually change the backgrounds and everything else that I've never seen it on Google Plus or LinkedIn. I think it's, that's just like as is. But on on uh, Twitter, what I tend to do is so that, is keep it as as um, as themed as I possibly can, so that when people get to the website, the colours don't change drastically. Sometimes they do because my Keith McMain site is an orange site because that's the brand and other business. But my social media uh, and social marketing academy site is black and grey like this, and this is where I. I I do tend to push people so make sure that you are on there because the other thing as well is don't forget and and it is a, a really valid point is that the amount of people or the number of people that now view all this on uh, mobile applications or mobile devices like smartphones uh, tablets netbooks is growing every day and we'll see another boom just after Christmas when people have, have bought the new Nexus uh, the new Nexus tablets and, and phones uh, because they're selling out like hotcakes at the moment. So it's all going to go up. People aren't sitting behind computers all the time, you know, with crystal clear screens, big screens. Remember that you are doing it for a, a mobile audience as well. And, and it is really a valid point because, as I say, it, it's grown all the time. So always have that in the back of your mind. Does that make sense, guys? Do you have the type of businesses where you know it it does mobile is something that uh, that would concern you? Well, not concern you, but you know. Yeah, brill. Anything you want to ask on Twitter, guys? Before we move off on on the profile side of it. I think that's uh, Ray's got a good point. Mobile search is already outstripping desktops. Doesn't matter what business you're in, and that's true because people are getting more connected. And I think as 4G and all this sort of thing starts to come in and be more prevalent, it's only going to grow. I can see. I mean, I have to say. I mean, I have a uh, a Galaxy phone, and I tend to use that more than I use anything else. And the the, um, the my desktop. I, I tend to use it for design and setting up my webinars and you know all of this sort of thing speaking to people uh, like on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter I, I do probably again a good 60 to 70 percent of it is done on my phone so it's uh, it's something that, that I've certainly seen change even even in my business over the last like 12 18 months it's it's changed dramatically anything else on Twitter guys before we Move off. Any questions? Brill. Now this is... Any comments about the new cover image? And I know you're talking about Twitter, uh, Ray, so yes, with, without a doubt. I mean, it, 
I, I, I mean, it for me, it's all contrast. Um, I tend to on the on the cover issue, like I said, I like to theme it so that when people go from my Twitter account back to one of the websites, that it's all the same. It, it's all got the same sort of look, the the feel. So yes, and again, you can use the 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 uh, cover image very much like. Uh, I uh, advised on Facebook is if you're doing anything, you know, like the type of thing I'm doing today. If you're doing anything like this, then then basically yes, put it in there. It's it's a fantastic thing. Uh, as the all are, it's it's a fantastic tool for you know competitions, letting people know what you're doing, any services, any products, any new products that are coming out. So yeah, without a doubt. Pinterest now, guys is. Does anyone, do we all have a, a Pinterest account? Or do we know what it is? Has anybody explored Pinterest in, in, in any great? Yep. Yeah. Riaz, Sarah has, yep. Yeah. Yeah, Brill, Joanne, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. I can see there are quite a few years are, are, are looking at it. And as I say, I will, uh, once this webinar is finished, uh, you will get an email. It won't be straight away, but the, the system chucks out emails. And what I'll do is I'll put the uh, the link into the um, into the Pinterest webinar so you can you can have a look at that and, and see if it's something that uh, that works for you. But one of the things that I really, really like about Pinterest is just the look of it. I think just because it's so graphical, and that probably goes back to my watercolour and uh, and, and design days, because it, uh, anything that looks really sort of visual and, and attracts the eye, really, I really like. I know that not everyone do, do, uh, does enjoy that, but I just think it's fantastic. And the layout's so good. So, I'll just bring up my Pinterest account. Probably open two. No, well, here we go. So, I, I probably won't touch a, a great lot of this, guys. Basically, just because that um, when I send you the link for the other webinar, for the Pinterest webinar, Everything that's on here, the boards, the pins, everything is all it's all discussed in that. I think the webinar's about an hour and ten minutes long, something like that. So it's really comprehensive. You can uh, you can have a you know a, a good look at it. One of the things I would say that if you if you do have a Pinterest account, verify your email. Uh, sorry, verify your web address, and that's in in the webinar in the other webinar. It takes you through it, so that is something that's really worth doing. Let's click on settings. I have one for my uh, social marketing academy, uh, but that's just in development. So I'm just going to show you my personal one. Cause it's pretty much the same thing. The good thing about Pinterest now is that Pinterest will let you set up uh, a business account. You don't have to have a personal account anymore. I mean, I started a personal account. I've had this for a while now, but you can just go straight in and uh, and create a business account if you've got a personal account then you can actually convert that into a business account and as, again as i said it, it's all in the webinar if you if you want to look at the webinar and as i say i'll send it out so that you can see it, guys but again they all follow a very very similar line where you know email address everything else and then again the same image or a similar image which is what I tend to do. Same thing again, social media consultant, speaker, serial entrepreneur, speaker, visionary, thought leader, artist who, who loves helping people. So anytime that anybody puts a search in there for anything like, you know, social media consultant, social marketing consultant, there's a good chance just by the length of time I've been on this thing, uh, pretty much since it started, uh, that I'll come up. And, and that's the, that's, basically what you're wanting for your business same again location come to UK website and again website verified and basically all that is is they give you a little uh, a little file that you can send up 
uh, via FTP to your server. Now, if that's leaving you cold and wanting to run for the hills, I understand because <laughs> not everybody knows the way that, that this works. But if you've got a website uh, and you haven't built it yourself, then pretty much your uh, your web designer or your web developer can do it for you. You just have to say that you want to be verified on, on Pinterest and uh, and they'll do it for you. If you can do it yourself, it's really simple. And as I say, it's covered in the in the webinar. Again, you can log in with uh, Facebook. You can log in uh, with Twitter. And I the reason that I have these on, even though I, I don't log in with, with either of those, is that because it's it's using the Facebook app and the Twitter app, it's actually been registered again. Um, so it's it's all building a, a pattern for Google and Bing and Yahoo and everybody else to find you. So that when you type in, and we'll do a little test here. If I type in Keith McMean into Google, I'm using the the Google Chrome browser. It's it's the one that I use. Um, some people use Firefox, some people IE, I use Chrome because it's just so quick. Now you can see there, obviously the websites come up first because, and, and I would expect it to. And the reason I would expect it to is because that domain name has been registered since about 1995. So just by virtue of, of the length of time I've had it, it, it will come up first. But it's really interesting to see that Twitter's come up second. And that's the second longest platform that I've been on. Uh, Twitter, sorry, that's the longest social marketing, uh, social media platform that I've been on Twitter. It's the first one I registered on. Google Plus, we'll get onto Google Plus in a minute, but this is why this is really, really important. Some of my old blogs, my old blog spot. Uh, LinkedIn, you can see again LinkedIn. So this, LinkedIn again, LinkedIn, Social Media Academy, Social Media Week. Uh, I spoke at that this week. So you can see that by having a full profile, it's and I suppose it's a it's a mute point at the moment. But one of the things that doesn't bother me, because of what I said before, is because I don't really do a great lot of, of business on uh, on Facebook. Facebook's on I think Facebook's on about the third or fourth page, and that's fine. The two main ones for me, Google Plus, well three main ones, LinkedIn and Twitter, are all on this first page. And that's where I do most of my business. That's where the the people who come to the webinars, like you guys today, the people who I consult for, the people who join the um, the social media marketing academy. This is where they come from. They come from LinkedIn, Google Plus, and Twitter. So that's the ones that I tend to spend most of my time on. So every now and again, w once you've made some changes to your profile, give it a little while. Give it maybe you know a week, ten days, and then do a search for yourself or your business. And just see what comes up, and then you can, you know, you can see if it's starting to work. So, same again, social media marketing, uh, social media, uh, social media marketing. It, it's you know, social media marketing. All the keywords that we put into all the profiles, all start to come through on Google. Is this starting to make sense, guys? Are you following me on this? Just type a yes into the box. Excellent. I mean, the whole sort of essence of the webinar today is to is to get you to have a profile that's so good it does start to come up on uh, in Google and everything else. And and this is the proof of it, I suppose, is because when I type my name in, that's basically what it is. I mean, the the sort of the holy grail for me, and this is probably other than retail shopping and fashion and thing like things like this the the sort of the holy grail for me is to type in social media marketing or social marketing and i'm on the front page on the, on the the home page but it's this is such a wide and vast um section of google it it's i'm not sure i'll ever get there i, I have to you know be a bit more sort of not a bit more um i'm trying to think of the word that explains it savvy in in what i do and how i do it um and i'll tell you one of the things that i do do from time to time i'll I look at some of the big guys in this like guy kawasaki chris bogan uh seth gordon who's probably the biggest one in 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 my business 
uh, and see what he does see see what he's putting to uh, to Facebook see what his keywords are what they are on Google plus and not you know just sort of not nick them but mirror them and then at least you know I can see if it if it's making any difference to me does that make sense guys yeah just type a yep in a yes Brill. Is there anything else on on Pinterest you want to go through, guys? I mean, one of the, as I say, I'll send you the link to the to the last webinar so that you can you can have a look at that, and that pretty much explains it all in 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 really great detail. Uh, so you can you know you can look at that. But is there anything that you want to ask me on Pinterest before we move on to uh, on to Google Plus? No, everybody seems to be happy. Brilliant. Let's have a look. Right now, Rachel just asked a question about um, about Pinterest, and as I said, it, it's all in the webinar. But and the question that she's asked is, when you merge your personal one to a business one, do you keep everything? Uh, does everything follow follow you across? And the, the short answer is yes, it does. Really, the only time it doesn't follow you, follow you across, Rachel, is if you create a new one. You know, like I did for my social marketing uh, academy, I created a, a, a brand new one. I didn't merge them, and so you, you, you basically you're starting off from scratch, and it, and that's really just a test for me. I'm, I'm using that site as a test to see how quickly I can grow to a thousand followers. Uh, so no, if you do merge your personal, you, you carry everything across. But uh, excellent question. Excellent question. Right, Google Plus guys, just type me a yes or a, a whatever into the box and just let me know if you have a Google Plus account or, or even just a Google account. Yep, yeah, Rachel, yep, yeah. Sarah, yep, yeah. Brill. Excellent, excellent. Fantastic. How many people... Is this a, a platform that you use a lot, or, or is it something that, because of its newness, if that's the right word, uh, you sort of just like getting to grips with it, and then I'll know how much to explain and, and what to go into. Yeah, Rachel's just getting to grips with it. Yeah, yeah, Sarah as well. Yeah, yeah, fantastic, fantastic, brilliant. Well, one of the one of the big things about about Google Plus. That's, that's actually Ray and Rachel have asked a, a, a pretty much a, a very similar question. Actually, as has yeah, as has Brian as well. Uh, the question roughly translates into that most people don't get it um, is because it isn't really a, a, a social platform as like Facebook or LinkedIn. Well, one of the, the ways to sort of think about Google Plus is that it's it's really like a, a, another layer of Google. So you've got Maps, you've got um, YouTube, you've got um, Gmail, you've got Google Drive. It's really just, just another layer of Google, if you like. And that's the way that I I, I tend to approach it. And, and again... Um, this is a totally different audience for me to all the others, even LinkedIn. And pretty much what I did a couple of weeks ago, I put the same introduction in. Introduction on this is just exactly the same as summary on, on all the others. I put the same summary in, word for word, in from LinkedIn into, into Google+. Plus. And I'm going to leave it probably another couple of weeks. I might even leave it till after Christmas and see if it makes any difference and then come back and change it. But again, that's me because I'm, I'm just testing these things so that when I do webinars like this, I, I can sort of, you know, I can show you what it's uh, what it's doing. But I've, I've used the same thing. But the nice thing is as well, and this is where Google to me really scores, is that in the LinkedIn one, these weren't linked. If you remember, these were, this was just text. 
the other fantastic thing about this is every time you put an update on this it goes into the main Google search hence why when I did a search for Keith McMean Google Plus was second or third even though it's seen it as Google Plus it is the main search and you can search Google Plus exactly the same as you can any other platform and again the images are really quite well it's the same image uh, and you get it very much like uh, Facebook you get a, um, a cover photo it's all just one this one and I, I just made this up in Photoshop uh, Ray's just asked a question is this the start of the context marketing idea I've read about I, I would say it, it, it is and it, and it isn't Ray uh, and the reason I say that is and the reason I, I, I sound a bit vague is because I'm not really sure that even Google is sure what this is all about and I know that might sound a bit strange but I I, I tend to think that, that Google they aren't really sure what this is because there's lots of uh, it's too much to go into now but there's lots of uh, glare and holes in this from a, a social marketing point of view and there's lots of things that they could be doing better and lots of things that they are doing that, that are a bit better so I, I would say yes and no but I, what I would say is uh, for everybody who's thinking about Google Plus is go on it yeah and I, in fairness Ray's asked have I seen Ed Dale's blog about his Nexus experience and I've read bits and pieces of it in, in fairness Ray. I haven't read it in its entirety uh, and it's something I've meant to do Robert Scoble did a, a, an exact same thing on Google Plus and it was a fantastic uh, post that he put on there all about it and and I think there's just it, because it's so new and because they're really only starting to get the head around it now and, and what to me what the power of it is as well is that I think in 2013 this is going to be the the one it, it is spooky yeah it is but I think this is going to be the platform I honestly do um, and the reason I say that is is because one it's Google and Google as far as the web go are pretty much everything and anything that's on there even if you're just in it for the search is the main thing but the the big thing for me is is the um, the engagement of it all because this is probably the only one where you can use like Google Hangouts Google Hangouts on on air and I'm going to be doing one of them in a couple of weeks time for everyone who's on the webinar today you'll get a link through to it but I'm going to be holding a, a, a Hangout on air in a couple of weeks time it'll be the last thing that I do before Christmas and, and then I'll be having a break um, but the Google, the the, the uh, Hangouts on, on air if you've never seen them or, or you've never had anything to do with them they're just a, it's a fantastic tool absolutely fantastic but I'll, I'll give you more details about that as, as and when I do it so again very much like LinkedIn uh, you get a chance to say you know what you do who you are who you do it for who you've done it for your employment your occupation places that you've lived and again this goes into Google Maps so it's worth doing it fill, fill it out as, as you know extensively put everything in there emails relationships everything because Google builds up a picture now I did a, a, a webinar a few months ago and one of the, the guys on the webinar said and it was a similar thing to this maybe not quite as focused on uh, on profiles but one of the guys on the webinar said do you not think that that we're now starting to put too much into this you know that the, the likes of Google and, and Microsoft and everyone else Amazon are, are getting just too much information about us and and I suppose I, I'm in I'm in the camp of that I think whatever's on there whatever you want to do whatever you you want to interact with I want to know as much about somebody before I interact with them or recommend them that I can and so I, I think it's only fair that you do the same so it, it I have to say it doesn't really bother me about what I put on there business wise personal wise is a totally different thing uh, that's why on Facebook it, it's a to it's a totally personal thing on Facebook that's all it is and anybody who's who tries to connect with me on Facebook they can't see anything all that type of thing because that is personal as far as business goes 
I think you've got to go to the nth degree because I can see from when I in in my publishing days when I was at the newspaper, two thousand one. Uh, 2000, 2001, that was when we really started to see the shift. And the shift was that people were no longer looking in um, the yellow pages or the old Thompson directory, white pages. Everything was starting to move to the web. And then you, things sprang up like Craigslist. Um, yellow pages moved on to the web. And I suppose it's just off topic a wee bit. But one of the things... Um, and I suppose it it isn't really that far off topic, but one of the th the things that I found and one of the things that I do and, and enjoy is that if I'm going to do anything, say a perfect example would be if I was going to buy a new car um, and say I wanted to buy a Mini, then pretty much what I would do, which I've never had the opportunity to, to do before, I would go onto the social platforms and probably the first one that I would go on to would be Facebook because it is more personable. And, and it is more personal and say I'm thinking about buying a Mini Cooper blah blah has anybody got one has anybody had um, any dealings with it who's the best garage to go to and you can pretty much guarantee with inside of like half an hour to an hour there'll be answers starting to come back through something that you could never do before if you looked in the paper you could maybe ask I don't know you could ask your, you could ask your family you could ask your circle of friends so even at a wild guess, you could maybe ask 200 people. And how long that would take you to ask 200 people could last weeks. But the shift now has been, and probably more from like 2007, 2008 onwards, when these platforms really became prevalent, is that now we can ask our community, our tribe. We can ask them questions. And it's surprising when you look on Facebook, and Google Plus is the same. People do ask questions. Uh, looking for a hotel in New York, looking for a hotel in London, uh, we're off on holiday, has anybody been to Bermuda, whatever. And these are starting to, to make up quite a lot of uh, what's on these platforms. Now, some people call that noise. Now, I tend not to. I tend to think of that as being like a bit of research, is that because you can you can look and see what people have, have uh, said about things. So, so basically, into the Google search, you could put, so if if we go to Google and you put um, WordPress websites, now we should see, because I follow quite a few guys on, on WordPress, you can see there, these are starting to become more and more prevalent now. These are guys on Google Plus that I follow that do WordPress stuff. So I can see pretty much, if I just knock the website out of it, we might get a, a few more, get less. Uh, I did a search the other day and loads of them came up. Right, so you can see there, Paul Tassi, this is one of the guys who I follow on uh, Facebook, on uh, Google Plus, sorry. So you can see now that it's actually starting to come up in the search. So when you ask for something, or, or if you search, it's probably going to be a bit too broad. But uh, be better if I could spell it right. If there's anyone on Google Plus that has written about uh, hotels in New York, there you go. That's in the Daily Telegraph. I followed the Daily Telegraph on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, and on Google Plus. So they all start to come up. Exactly right. Yep. Yeah. Ray and Sarah have said exactly the same thing. It depends on whether you're logged into your Google account for one thing, and that's right. I mean, I one of the, the things for me is and you can see in the top corner I'm logged in pretty much all the time into Google um, and so for, for me Google is for, for the business I have Google is, is an integral part of uh, of what I do so yes so not only is, is the way we search the way we look for things changing the way that people look for businesses uh, that's also changing as well because 
you know, people are putting social media marketers, people are putting photographers in Cumbria, people are putting uh, hotels, this, that, and the other. So that's really, guys, why it's really, really vitally important that all of your profiles on any platform that you're on is filled out as far as uh, to the nth degree that can possibly be. Does that make sense? Yep, yep, yeah. Again, uh, Rachel's asked, Rachel said the same thing. Brian said the same thing, and so is Ray. It does make it hard to get clean results, and uh, and that's the problem. I mean, you you have to be really specific. But again, you know, in in Google, what you can do if you're looking for something really specific, like uh, hotels in New York, New York, put speech quotes around it, and that's all it will bring back. We I could talk for another two hours on on search terms uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's right right it does but, but we're all guilty of it and and that's that's the same that's the thing uh, yeah it, it's uh, it, it's just one of them things I mean search is getting better but you, you're dead right it can get to the stage where they aren't that clean so for me having a Google account and logging in uh, is, is just it's second nature now. It's like getting up in the morning and, and having a cup of coffee. It's the same thing. So on Google Plus, guys, any, any questions? Any questions on, on because we're near on out of time? I didn't realise it was uh, just leaving 20 past three. Uh, so is, is there any questions on, on profiles, guys, that you want to ask me? Anything, you know, that we've covered that you want to ask? Actually, again, um, Ray and Brian have asked a similar questions. It's uh, can Google get into business page profiles on Facebook? And and basically, it's like any platform. Uh, Google their uh, algorithms, the way that they're set up now, they pretty much search everything. And I think Facebook, LinkedIn, certainly Twitter, have made it more uh, made it a lot easier. For, for Google to get in and search I mean that's that's one of the the things that uh, that they all sort of agree on if they agree on anything is that uh, search and social media go together the hand in hand hence why Google brought out Google plus as, as like I said another layer so the the short answer to that guys is, is yes it, it can it gets in as far as Facebook wants it to but I think it's like anything else. If if you're searching for something, uh, it, I I think if you're searching for something, is uh, yeah, I've seen I've actually seen that before. Ray, so what I'll do is yeah, the the yeah the link looks horrible, but, but what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll copy it and keep it and I'll send it out. In the email, and then uh, everybody can have a look. Ray's just put up a, a link for a, a cheat sheet at LinkedIn, uh, and it's really useful. I, I have quite a few of them actually, uh, different cheat sheets. They they are really handy. What I want to do, guys, just for like the last ten minutes, we'll just have a a, a quick recap on what we've done. Yeah, Ray says that the links minus the dimensions for the new winter, uh, new Twitter cover, but I'll put them in. I'll uh, I'll put the new Twitter covers in, uh, and I, I think I've got a sheet somewhere that's got all of the the you know, like Facebook and all that sort of thing. I'll if I dig it out, I'll put it in, and then you've got all of it. Yeah, no bother, guys, and, and I'll sort that out. So, just before we finish, a quick recap of what we've gone over, and and again, this is where you should. I know I've recorded it, but write it down again. Um, you know, make sure that your profile is as good as it can be. Don't leave any glaring holes in it. Even if you get someone to have a look at it, you know, I mean, that that's w one of the things. Just get someone to go through it for you. The other thing, 
most most this probably should have been the top one is have a either have a picture of yourself or at least you and your staff whatever have have pictures on there that really help show you are what you do websites and blog urls that are a must because people should be going back to your website to find out more and that's one of the things take them back to your website guys like i said before twitter and places like that are the headlines the stories actually back at your site don't forget about your contact details most important because it's surprising how many people come back and say oh yeah i uh I had a, a look at such and such's profile, but I, I don't know how to get in touch with him. They maybe haven't put the you know the email address on or the or the mobile phone number or whatever. Make sure that it's all on there. The point of all of this is to make it as easy for people to get in touch with you as you possibly can. Because at the end of the day, if you're running your business, that's the lifeblood of your business is people actually getting in touch with you. So make it as easy as you possibly can. So now guys, this is one of the things that I, I, I give everyone an opportunity for and, and this is no different and because there's so many of us on the uh, webinar today and I know we've spent a wee bit of time but to me now you, you've probably got two choices and the first one is is to spend all of your time pretty much what I've, I've done for the last 10-15 years trying to figure out all this stuff and everything that goes on platforms all the things that we've covered today and more or what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you an opportunity for a shortcut uh, to come with me uh, with the social media Academy and basically what that does I'm going to take you through everything all the strategies that I use all the, the little uh, techniques that I've got for finding all this stuff out is pass all it on to you all of this on to you now I suppose it, the thing for me is I, I can empathize with you guys because one of the things that when I first started this in 2005, 2006, when I really started to look into it, was basically it was getting the results. It was a really, really slow process trying to find everything. And, and basically what I'm offering today is a chance for you guys to get results faster and easier because pretty much I've gone through all that pain. I've done it all and one of the reasons why I set the academy up was for, for people like us um, who have struggled or, and who do struggle with it uh, to come in and learn. So the big thing for me is is to help you as quickly and easily get more customers, more exposure, whatever it is that you guys want to learn, whatever it is you, you want to sort of, you know, what your end game is is for me to help you as, as much as I possibly can. One of the things about the Academy that I have to say, and, and I suppose the big thing for me is at the moment, is that I'm changing all of everything that's that's in the Academy. Uh, a lot of the training that I've got in there is, it, it's like pre-2009, 2008. So at the moment what I'm doing is I'm going through everything, keeping some stuff, making new modules, just to give you a, a, a bit of an idea. I've got a, a whole set of new templates for email marketing because one of the things that people forget really, really, and, and it's a shame because the thing because of social media and Facebook and everything else and the stuff that we've talked about is basically the forget about email marketing is that if you've got a list and again it doesn't matter how many are on there that people people are on that list because they want to hear what you've got to say and one of the things one of the modules that I'm actually setting up in the academy is. Um, they're like little um, templates on what you can send out. So it's a, the first template is how to engage with people, call to actions, things like that in emails. Stuff like you, pretty much stuff like I've sent to you guys where it's been, you know, it's been laid out in a certain way. It's been really easy to click the links. The content has been really engaging. And that's the type of thing that, that I give in the academy. And that's for, for pretty much everything. One of the new things that I'm going to do is uh, blogging for success and basically what it is, it's a 10 week course and, and it's going to be a separate course where I'll teach you everything about blogging, all about sticky content, uh, when to send it out, how to attract um, your community, your tribe if you like, 
and then there's going to be the social market, social media marketing for success, which is another standalone uh, course, and that's a 16-week course, and that's all about social media marketing. One of the things that I, I, I do sort of, I love to do like this, with, which is like the webinar side of it, is the training videos. And what I do is, uh, for a lot of the modules, I, I have training videos so that people can go back in any time. Once you've registered for the academy, it's a 24-7 you know, deal. You just go back in when you feel like it. it, uh, it the training videos are one of the highlights of it. And it's one of the things that I get uh, commented on probably more than anything else is uh, just the quality of them. Because I, I don't hold anything back. I'm not one of these where it's like, oh, well... You know, if I show you guys too much, you're going to be doing it instead of me. Like I said before, that as far as I'm concerned, anybody who comes through the academy will learn as much as they possibly can, and, and I never hold anything back. All the webinars that I do, they're all in there because the webinars stay up for probably two or three days. Everybody gets two or three days access to them, and then they go into the academy and they go behind the paywall, basically. Um, and that's really because like today I give as much information as I possibly can I don't like to hold anything back one of the guys who, who looked at the academy for me who, who does a similar thing to me said you should be charging around the 300 mark uh, 300 pound a year mark for it Keith and to be honest I, I, even though it's worth it and, and I did sell it at that for probably the first 12 months or so that I had it I just felt that it was keeping some people out because you know Obviously, in the climate today, not everyone can afford 300 quid a year to come into the academy, even though I do have to say that most people make this back in no time. The current price, as it is now, is £197 uh, a year, and in that you get everything, access to the forum, access to me, uh, stuff really that other people don't get. Everything that I do, you guys get to hear first, and then maybe a week or so later, it'll go out uh, to the public you know basically through the blog or through Facebook or Twitter or whatever but to be honest for the guys who come on the webinar and, and there's still you know loads of people that, that keep coming back and, and come every now and again it's just fantastic for me I'm not even going to charge like 197 what I'm going to do today for anybody who wants to sign up today and the links at the bottom which is is that one and it'll be in the in the follow follow up email Today's price is only going to be 97 quid, and that's going to be for a full year. All the modules, the forums, all the templates that come with everything, uh, all the training videos, all the webinars. There's going to be everything that I do is that's in the academy is going to be yours for just 97 quid. And when you think about it, I mean, it's probably just more than a cup of coffee a day. A cup of coffee and a cake in Costas, probably. And all the stuff that you're going to learn. And I think... When I ask students who, who come in and, and students who have been me for been with me for a few years now, I always ask them what's the, the, the key thing for the academy? And the key thing is that their access to me is because they get access when no one else does. Uh, so all the things that I learn, all the stuff that I'm researching continually that would obviously interfere with what you guys do, I'm just given that all the time. So people are they're coming to the forums and they're asking, you know, questions and, and I'm on there answering. And and that's the big thing for them. And then it's closely followed by the webinars and the training videos. So even just for that, for those two things, it's worth it. So one of the big things for me, guys, is who's the training for? Well, to me, it's for everybody who's online. I mean, bloggers who doesn't want more traffic, service providers. One of the big things is that it builds trust with your audience and it shows the value of your services. That's the big thing for me with the Academy. If you've got a product-based business, and we've got quite a few of these in the Academy, you create online catalogs, e-commerce sites. They're all in there asking questions. You know, what, what do we do? How do we do it? Direct sales or network marketers and even internet marketers we've got a few of them in there guys who uh, like me sell stuff online uh, they're in there learning pretty much every day if you're an author a coach or a speaker which I, I suppose all three of those cover me and cover a few people that are in there as well so you can see it's there for a, a broad range of people and one of the, the things for me is that the results that you get out of it is because 
I do want to give you more traffic want to get your products online as soon as possible and help you sell them including ebooks and videos because it's surprising how many people you know want to do webinars like I do and and in there I teach you how to do webinars what software I use um, how I put everything together do I use Google Hangouts what I use for all my email marketing everything that I use on a day-to-day -day basis to keep in touch with my community my tribe is in there even if you've got stuff that, that like the e-commerce stuff that runs alongside your existing website, everything that you want to do that's concerned with uh, online sales or, or even just online promotion is all in there. So for me, guys, like I've said, it, it's a bit of a no-brainer. Just for one payment today of 97 quid, you can be in there and you can be learning it. You know, you can be in there with me doing anything that you want to do and anything that you want to learn will be there so the big thing for me is is because it's I've only got a limited time with this because places are starting to run out and because I don't take that many um, it, it is quite limited I'm, I'm not one of these it's like you know sell it cheap and, and stack it high the people that come into the Academy they come into a, into the Academy for one reason and one reason only and that's to learn so I do tend to sort of like you know keep it nice and con uh, compact I, I don't have that many in there isn't like thousands in there that, that isn't what I want so there's there's only really two two reasons um, that it'll go back up to its normal price of, of 197 which is all the places have gone and and it is filling up fast I have to say because I've I've sold it off the back of a couple of webinars already so it is starting to fill up or Christmas Eve it'll it'll go off it'll definitely go off on Christmas Eve and then it'll go back to its normal price of 197 quid but one thing I am going to do as well is I'm going to give you a 14 day money back guarantee so that it makes it a wee bit easier so that once you've paid your, your 97 quid basically if after 14 days you know you decide well it isn't for me or, or whatever then you can have your money back there's no quibble on that you just you know just say that you want your money back and it'll all be sorted so what I want you to do guys is see the link along the bottom is just scoot along I know it's quite a long link write it down put it in your pad uh, and then scoot along and just register one of the other things that, I, that one of the new modules actually that I'm that I'm going to be uh, sharing with people is all about squeeze pages and sales pages so if it's something that interests you which a lot of people in the academy does that's going to be a, a brand new module for 2013 and I'm working on that now so if it's something that, that you know that you want to do if it's something that you want to be involved in I, I don't want to do a hard sell on anybody if it's something that, that you're interested in guys then scoot across sign up and, uh, and and then you'll be with me we'll have a fantastic time Questions, guys, just before we finish, because I know we've run over time, which I always do. I, I, I don't know why I say it's an hour and a half. It, it's basically going to... They always run to two hours, two hours, quarter. So if you've got a question, guys, about anything that we've covered today, then just fire away, and I'll, I'll answer them until we uh, until we finish. Ah, spot on. Nice. Thanks, Brian. Brian signed. That's brilliant. Well done, Brian. Yeah. Nice to see that, that so many of you off off the uh, off the webinar have signed up. Brilliant, brilliant. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. And I know that there's lots of stuff in there that that you're going to enjoy. No probs, Ray. Nice that you were along, mate. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, enjoyed your company. If you need anything, again, just give me a shout. Well, guys, I think that just about wraps it up. So it's just for me to say thanks very much for everyone who's attended the webinar and all the guys that have signed up to the academy. Uh, as I say, I'm going to be doing another one in it in probably a couple of weeks' time, and you'll get an email that that'll just give you all the information. So thanks again, guys. Have a great rest of the day, and I'll speak to you very soon. Take care.